Salutations to you, YouTube. Hey, folks, hope you're doing well. Today, as you can probably tell from the title and this clip, we're talking about breeding and raising the young of Oriental Firebelly Toads, Bombina Orientalis. One of our favourite subjects if you want to look back at previous videos. We've got a few builds for them. So here we can see adult Oriental Firebelly Toads in Amplexus. That's the position they get in when they're breeding. The male has what's called nuptial pads, sort of where you'd expect to find the thumbs on the four feet, and that helps them grip onto the female in this position. So here you can see the wiggling from side to side we've noticed the males tend to do, and it's after we've noticed this sort of behaviour that we've seen successful spawnings. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to capture spawning on film, as it frequently seems to happen at night, and as soon as we use a torch or some illumination, they move away. So hopefully you can hear behind me the mating call. Now, they do tend to make a noise to attract partners or to tell another toad that they want them to get off them. Sometimes I think a male tries to mount a male and the one that is being mounted will make a noise to try and convince the other one to get off him. Or an unreceptive female might do the same, I don't know. But in fact, in this instance, it was the third party calling out for a mate, not the two we were filming. So we all know what to expect from a mating like this, and that is spawn. And here we see some toad spawn. So there's quite a lot in the tank after spawning. We found throughout the season it's diminished each time they spawn how much they produce, but you can see a lot on the floor here. And if we move along, they tend to like laying them in vegetation especially. And that's where you get the most of it. Now this wasn't a planned mating that we've had. I didn't do anything to induce it. And you'll hear how happy we were about it in this following clip. Oh, yes, all near the surface. Yeah, once you see it, you can't unsee it. Oh God, what have we done? What have you done? So something that surprised me was having kept tadpoles from UK species Rana temporia. These guys develop really quickly. This is about a couple of days after they were laid, perhaps 48, 36 hours, and they're almost fully developed little tadpoles ready to hatch. Uh, they'd have hatched within 12 hours of this video being taken, and they're ready to go. As I said, there seems to be a preference for laying these in and around vegetation and this java fern has it in below the surface on the surface they're everywhere here's a little one barely recognizable as a tadpole the scale mm, he's about 10 mil away from my finger but they're pretty small oh maybe he's got the surface Absolutely tiny, just hatched today. So this tank wasn't set up to accommodate young, hence we've got white cloud mountain minnows, shrimps, ramsall snails in there. I don't think the snails and the shrimps cause much problems, but here you can see one of the white cloud mountain minnows trying to predate on a tadpole, which is just a bit too big for it. This is probably five days a week old. They grow very rapidly, we found, if they're not predated by the fish first. So we have a limited number of tadpoles come through. However, if we'd managed to raise all the tadpoles with clutch sizes of around 200 per clutch, uh, we'd be inundated. We wouldn't be able to cope with all the tadpoles. So you can see some. These are probably a week, a week and a half old at this stage. They've grown significantly. They've got a rounder shape to them. You can see them scavenging on the bottom there amongst the shrimps trying to get a meal. They seem to do well at this stage on algae wafers. I also feed them tropical fish food, which is supposed to enhance red colours, certainly in tropical fish. And there you can see the shrimp enjoying some. And again, the white cloud mountain minnows pestering the tadpoles, but they can't predate them at this size. So this is about two and a half to three weeks on. And you're going to see a real significant size increase. Here we are, finger for scale. Absolutely enormous, but the size of 
my thumbnail at this stage. You can see a few of them. There's a few from different batches, so you've got different sizes and together. I don't know if cannibalism is a big problem at this time, but I've certainly seen tadpoles eating deceased tadpoles. So they will eat ones that have died previously. Uh, whether they'll predate each other, I don't know. But we seem to have a few different sizes in at the same time from different clutches. And we left them in with the adults and the fish and shrimps and the snails. Without any problems really once they were past that really tiny stage after they just hatched. At this size we start adding different feeds to the algae wafers and the fish food. We've added frozen bloodworm, live bloodworm, live daphnia, all of which were taken with relish by these tadpoles at this size and I think helped them bulk up pretty quickly. And here you can see one of the big tadpoles just sprouted his back legs. So this is about three, four weeks in. You start seeing legs on some of them. You can just see the starts on that one there. Starting to poke out the back. And shortly after you get to see properly developed legs, you can see a couple there. They're pretty small, but they're pretty fully developed. And these, these are ready to go. These are as big as they're going to get on the toad look. Here we see some further developed ones. Uh, in the back there you can see fully developed back legs. And in fact, I think you can see the front legs starting to develop on that one there. You see a sort of ridge denoting where the head would be. And it's about that point on the body where the front legs start to come out shortly. It's not long after that. This is at about week five. I suppose it's all temperature dependent and other limiting factors. But this is week five for us. We start getting tadpoles, have their front legs come out. You can see this guy pretty well developed. So <laughs> this is an accumulation of snails due to the algae wafers that have been put in to feed the, the tadpoles. And there's our guy just hiding out under the piece of wood there. All four of his limbs showing off. At this stage, they still retain the very round tadpole look that they've had. And they're absolutely enormous. They sort of fit to burst. And this is about the biggest they get for a while. Because as they metamorphosize further, they seem to slim down and get smaller. So here's one. This is really getting ready to get out of the water. But you can see he hasn't, he's lost that round bit. The eyes are more prominent on top. He's still using his tail to swim about. He's still eating the aquatic food that we've been giving them all along. And they start experimenting, coming up into the shallows, onto the land. Probably start breathing a bit of air now still. Still an aquatic food, but we might put a few fruit flies in at this stage in the shallows and to try and predate. And then finally, your toadlets exit the water. So this is a rarity. This is a toadlet with almost his full tail left, quite away from the water. But yeah, this will be what they look like when they first exit. There's one slightly older. But as you can see, as the as the tail goes in, they get smaller. If you compare the size of a toadlet that's just gone on the water to the size of a tadpole, before it starts sprouting any legs, they're minute in comparison. Now once they're on the land, they've got to eat something, and I presumed that fruit flies would be the thing to feed them. However, when I purchased fruit flies, Drusfilla Heidi, again, don't go on my Latin pronunciations, they were too big, I found. Luckily, I've got a few cultures of springtails, so I was feeding them springtails, and I ordered the other species of Drusfilla uh, Melanogasta, I think it is. Anyway, they're a bit smaller than the Heidi, and they could deal with them pretty well. So I, they're tested with neutral well and calcium at every feed. Uh, I created cultures. I think there's a TikTok for Tim Reptile uh, showing our cultures. And through feeding these, we're now at a point where a lot of our toadlets are ready to go to new homes. So I'll just do a quick run through of the setup that we've got, and what we're feeding them now. So this is where the toadlets have been raised in their nursery tank. You can see we've repurposed the old firebelly toad paludarium tank. To make this, we've got a couple of pieces of Mopani down here to create the land. We've got some Ficus pamelia, some baby tears. That's a spider plant doing quite well, growing out the water. Nubius, Java fern. Another little ornament from an aquarium in the back corner to create another island. One of my homemade filters, just some sponges with an aquarium pump. That's 
flow out there. Um, yeah, and there's a getting on for 30 toadlets in here altogether. Unheated, we're in the middle of a heat wave here in the UK. Ideally, they could be cooled, I suppose. I've got a compact UV in there and a micro LED just for the plants in there. They're getting fed the two species of Drosophila still, the fruit flies. Uh, mini mealworms, we just started them on. Uh, second in star crickets are going in there and they're getting their way through them. Could use pin and crickets at an earlier stage, but we've got um, so many fruit flies, we've just been using them. Everything's dusted with Nutribol calcium. And that's the setup. So a lot of these guys have got new homes ready, but we've got a few still looking for homes. But that's the setup. The brown is just tannins coming from the Mopani. Um, do a water change once a week. Seems to work quite well. Oh, we've got snails intentionally in the bottom from the main parent tank. And a few shrimp found their way in here. That wasn't intentional. And they seem to help us clean up crew in the water. So you can see there's some very sized toads in here. And there's a lot of the, and the colours are variable. They're not the green of the parents yet. The bellies aren't fired up yet. But you can see there's lighter ones, darker ones. And some of them are a pretty good size now. So that, folks, is your lot. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope it's spared you on to try and do breeding if that's what you wanted some information on. And please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and thanks for watching. Cheers, YouTube. Bye now.